everyone. My name is Graham. I'm dressed like this because I want to know what it feels like to be a real chef. I want to be able to bake a cake that's as tall as me. I want to make chocolate chip cookies that are so gooey the chocolate stretches a full six feet. I want to understand what fondant is. Fondant? Fondant? I want to be able to say the word fondant. But like most things in life, becoming a real chef takes time. It takes patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. And I know a thing or two about patience. I signed up for a baking class six weeks ago that wasn't supposed to start until today. So I have to wait. And today I found out that the class has been postponed for another two weeks because our teacher is sick. It looks like she's going to be okay, but Still, I have to wait some more. So now I'm wondering, what if I never get to go to class? What if it gets postponed again and again and again? What if it stays this way forever? forever. 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 The longer I have to wait, the harder it gets. If only there was some way to make the waiting not feel so hard. <laughs> Maybe there is a way. In today's story, we'll learn about a guy named Simeon who had to wait a long time for God to keep his promise. But Simeon didn't have to wait alone. So, I guess I'll see you soon. I'll just wait here. Oh man, I could really go for one of those gooey chocolate chip cookies right about now. Mmm, chocolate. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now. 
powerful and amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. The birth of Jesus was unusual in many ways. He entered the world in a shelter with the animals and was celebrated by an entire host of angels. Glory to God in the highest. But Mary and Joseph cared for Jesus as with any child. When he was about six weeks old, they prepared to present him to the Lord at the temple. The law says we must offer a sacrifice of two pigeons. Or doves. How is he six weeks old already? But as Mary and Joseph set out for Jerusalem with their firstborn son, someone was already waiting for them, a man named Simeon, and their stories were about to collide. Simeon had grown up in Jerusalem, faithfully worshiping God. He prayed daily. Lord, help me understand your law. Help me serve you with my whole life. Simeon would have studied the scriptures, words from the prophets from hundreds of years before. The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. They are now living in a very dark land, but a light will shine on them. What light, Lord? Over the years, Simeon continued to pray, to worship, and to seek God in the temple. God's Holy Spirit was with him. And one day, the Spirit made Simeon a promise. You will not die before you see the Lord's Messiah. Me? With my own eyes? Thank you, Lord. Simeon believed the promise and waited in joyful expectation. Will it be today, Lord? Simeon waited some more. Will it be this year, Lord? And then he waited still more. How about this decade? We aren't quite sure how long Simeon had to wait, but when his hair turned snow white, he was still waiting. Soon, Lord. Today, at last, Simeon received a new response. A temple courtyard? I I'm on my way. Uh, where's my cloak? My walking stick? God's spirit led Simeon straight up to the temple mount and into the courtyard. Simeon stood in the center of the courtyard allowing the voices to wash around him. He wasn't quite sure what he was looking for, but he knew God would reveal it to him. A baby? Simeon turned quickly to see a young couple nearby. The man carried a pair of doves in a small cage, the usual sacrifice after a child was born. The woman cradled a tiny baby in her arms. Joseph, where do we go? Excuse me. Both the man and the woman looked up quickly. May I hold the child? <laughs> Well, all right, yes. Simeon took the child gently into his arms. In the eyes of this infant, he saw the face of God, the rescuer, God's promised Messiah. His name is Jesus. Overwhelmed, Simeon turned his gaze toward heaven. Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Mary and Joseph stared in amazement. We knew he was special. This. Simeon looked down at the child, then glanced up at Mary and Joseph again. May the Lord bless you both. Gently, Simeon returned Jesus to his mother's arms. After a lifetime of waiting, Simeon was overjoyed to see the fulfillment of the promise God had given him so long ago. We don't know for sure how long Simeon had to wait before he got to see Jesus, but it's possible he had to wait for years. We usually don't have to wait years for something to happen. But sometimes when we're waiting, it can feel like years. Sometimes it can feel like forever, ever, 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 ever. Like when you're waiting for your birthday or Christmas, or when you're waiting to feel better while you're sick. I know it's hard to wait, but here's the good news. You don't have to wait alone. God is with you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what the whole world is going through, and he knows how it will all turn out. 
So talk to God. Put your trust in Him. He's going to be with you through everything. In fact, God will be with you forever. So, that's the one thing to remember today. When you have to wait, remember God is with you. I still have to wait for my first baking class. Maybe it'll happen in two weeks, maybe longer. But no matter what, I won't be waiting alone. God will be with me. I'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll have some gooey chocolate chip cookies for us to try by then. I wonder if the goo will stretch from me to you. I can't wait to find out. <laughs> see you then. So please don't interrupt. Interrupt what exactly? I've been feeling very impatient lately. I think it's because we live in a world where I can get most anything I want instantly. I check my phone for social media updates every four seconds. Sometimes I can watch a show on TV at the same time I'm watching a show on my laptop. At night, when I'm asleep, I listen to music so I don't have to hear the deafening roar of silence. So I'm trying to prove that I don't have to constantly be doing something to entertain myself. By? By doing the most boring thing I could think of. Watching paint dry. Oh, oh, okay. Wait a minute. This isn't the part of the wall I painted. Oh, man. Worth the wait. Hello, my name is Brandon. And I'm John. And this is... The so Show. Come on, let's get this show moving. What is the rush, John? Oh, we got fun to have, stories to tell, and lives have changed, my friend. And I, for one, do not want to delay the proceedings with any overabundance of frivolous repartee. Also, I'm hungry, oh, so... Uh, come on, come on. Okay, uh, that's Frivolous. okay. Right, that's today is our baking show. Let's eat. Okay, hold on. We gotta bake something first. Uh, it's a baking show, but right? I'm hungry now. I'm hungry I get now. it. We're gonna. Okay, I'm sorry. You'll have to wait. We're gonna have a baking expert on the show a little later on. But first, we're no. Gonna play please welcome someone who knows stuff. <laughs> John, I don't think it's time for someone who knows stuff right now. You're just wasting hey, your time. Hey, come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Are they here? Yeah. yeah. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Here, 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 here. Have this seat. That's really great. Sorry. Sit right here. Who are you and what do you know? Hi. Huh. Uh, my name is Felina Tossi, and I'm a professional pastry chef. I make cakes and pies and all sorts of sweet, flaky goodness. Awesome. Let's eat. Okay. Look, uh, can you teach us how to bake in approximately three and a half minutes? Uh, I don't know. How, how much do each of you know about baking? Oh, well, I, I attended Le Cordon Bleu for a year. And I'm not entirely sure how to get the inside of an egg to the outside. Uh, well, that is a pretty wide gulf, but that's okay. We can bake something that is simple for everyone. A oh. cake. Oh, let's eat cake. We have got to bake it first. Okay, then uh, it's time for the so-and-so show cake bake. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the so-and-so show cake bake. I'm Felina Tossi, and today we're making this, a Funfetti celebratory cake. Perhaps it's for a birthday, maybe a graduation, 
Whatever the occasion, this white cake with chocolate frosting is a delicious treat for any who choose to partake. Let's check in with our chefs. Ooh, as you can see, Brandon is doing one of the most important things you can do for any recipe. He's reading the instructions. Let's see how John's doing. Oh, uh, John is just going for it. He must be really hungry. Oh, really good cake takes time. You don't want to rush it. Remember, this isn't a race. It's just baking. Just look at the way Brandon cracks an egg. He is in no hurry whatsoever. You can tell Brandon's cake is going to taste good just by watching how much care he's putting into every step. Stirring by hand is a lost art. Chefs today often prefer electric mixers. Different chefs, two different techniques. Let's see which one worked the best. Brandon, bring your cake to the table. Wow, that looks terrific. What's your secret? Well, Felina, I followed the directions on the back of the box. Uh huh. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. Let's uh, try a bite. Mmm. Spongy and delicious. Well done. Thank mm. you. Let's see how John did. John? Yes, I got it. Oh, here it is. Want a bite? Uh, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Forgot the icing. Come on. It just comes out like one. Oh, it's like cranberry sauce. There we go. Uh, did, did you? Did you even bake your cake? Well, Felina, I did put it in the oven for a few minutes, but now that you mention it, it did seem colder than it should have. Oh, did you let the oven preheat? Pre-what now? Oh. Hey. Mmm. Bye. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. That is not good. Just the bag. <gasps> you want to try some of mine? Yes, I do! Okay, let me get a fork for it. Oh, no. Spongy! Oh, yeah, you're right. Follow the directions. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh, so good. <laughs> Hey guys! Hey Kellen! What are we talking about today? Well today, we are talking about waiting. And waiting. And waiting. And to help us through those long, long waits, we've got the So-and-So Show Players! God's people knew a lot about waiting. 
For hundreds of years, they had been waiting for God to send them a Savior or a Messiah like he promised. One of God's people, a man named Simeon, lived in Jerusalem. He was a good and godly man, and he was told by the Holy Spirit that he would see the Messiah with his own eyes sometime before he died. I will? I gotta get to the temple. Now, we can only imagine how Simeon felt when the Holy Spirit told him that he would see the Messiah. He was probably very excited. Yo, Simeon, what's going on, bro? Who are you looking for? The Holy Spirit told me that I would see the Messiah with my own eyes. What? <laughs> the Holy Spirit? said you would see the Messiah today? Well, he didn't say today exactly. Oh, well then, uh, then when? Just sometime before I die. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna head out, huh? Uh, see you next time, tomorrow, yeah? Same time, okay? Works for me. All right, all right, cool. Okay. We don't know how long Simeon had to wait. Could have been days, or weeks, even years. But he waited. Oh, has he come yet? Has he come yet? Not yet. No. Oh. In waited. Got to be today, right? <laughs> so obviously, it's got to be today. I mean, you have waited forever. Maybe. And waited, even after so many other people had given up. Waiting for that long for something so important would have been difficult. I can only imagine what it felt like day after day, year after year, just waiting. But then, one day, the Holy Spirit led Simeon into the temple courtyard. It's him. It's him. Pardon me. Oh, yes? May I, uh, may I hold your precious child? Oh, uh, we don't even know of you. Of course. What's his name? His name is Jesus. Jesus. Lord, you are the king of all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Simeon had seen the Messiah, our Savior, just like the Holy Spirit promised. It took a lot of waiting, but Jesus was worth the wait. Hmm. What I miss? Uh. The end. Let's give it up for the so-and-so show players. Great story, Kellen. Yeah, waiting is hard. I know. I mean, think about how you feel the night before your birthday. Now add that with the night before Christmas and the night before the first day of school or vacation or anything really exciting. Then multiply that by a million and you might come close to what it felt like to be one of God's people waiting for the Messiah to come. Simeon could have given up and lost patience, but he didn't. He knew he had the Holy Spirit with him, just like we know we have God with us, even while we're waiting. That's awesome. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. I'll see you guys next time, if you can wait that long. We'll do our best. Bye. Aren't you gonna? I am. 
Then why are you not? I'm proving that I can be patient. I'll just do it. Re Reveal the question! Today's question is, when is it hard to have patience? You know, I think I showed pretty clearly that my answer is all the time. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to have patience when you're waiting for good things, like uh, having to wait to open birthday presents. <laughs> and sometimes patience is hard during bad times, like waiting for a sickness to go away. Oh, yeah. Hey, talk about it together, and welcome to the So-and-So Show! What do you mean, welcome? The show is over. I'm getting started on the next one. I just can't wait! <laughs> Did you learn nothing? Oh, just like always. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Brandon, and that's John. And today on the show, we're telling the Bible story with laundry! We'll see you next time. Hey, laundry! Wow, that's good! <laughs> no, 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 John! No, 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 put that. No, no. Ah, oh. oh, E. Ah, oh, this, this is a nightmare. Ah, uh, yeah, well, I'm used to it. No, 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 no there's a fork. fork! Use a... Oh, fork? Yeah. You got oh. a little icing on your fingers there. A fork helps. Ah. Huh? Let's uh. tell oh. a little corner. Brandon. We can decorate some more. <laughs> <laughs>